we have come to the end of the year and Marvel has put out an abundance of MCU TV shows and with the release of Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special we have 11 of those TV shows I'm including you know the this special and also Werewolf by Night so I'm here to stop and rank all 11 MCU TV shows ranked from the worst to the best please know that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion my name is S Dub Nation and you are free to comment down below your very own ranking of all 11 MCU TV shows right from the worst to the best just like me or you could just do your favorite please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's gonna pop up on your screen right now and also don't forget to check out that Marvel playlist that link is in the description and with that being said guys like comment and subscribe and let's get right into our ranking kick it off our list that number 11 for me has got to go to I am Groot this show is set between Guardians 1 and also volume 2 so it is in fact, canon. And a lot of people didn't think that it was canon, but yes, it is canon. Uh, even, you know, Bradley Cooper makes an appearance as Rocket inside of the show. Baby Groot is the star of this show and really is just a series of cute little shorts. It's five shorts with this adorable character getting into some fun antics. It's just harmless content for Disney+. Plus and, you know, you really don't have a big opinion on it because there's barely any dialogue. Kick it off my top 10 list for me, it's gotta go to She-Hulk Attorney at Law. I was so excited for this show, the trailers look fantastic, the tone of the show seemed like the right direction for this character, and of course, Daredevil was gonna be in this, and Daredevil is my favorite Marvel superhero, and probably is my favorite superhero of all time. Now, with that being said, all of those are positives. The trailers, the tone, Daredevil. Tatiana Maslany is great. The fourth wall breaking is also very cool. And if they could do it great here, Deadpool can totally work. Tatiana Maslany just has this certain charm about her as Jennifer Walters. And then when she's in She-Hulk form, she's also pretty likable as well, in my opinion. And this is just like WandaVision, the only series to feel like an actual show. But the writing here sucks. The plot wasn't there, and overall, it just wasn't funny. The whole stealing She-Hulk's blood plot was stretched over the entire season for nine episodes, and when the finale came, when it finally seemed like, okay, let's just wrap this up, let's just get this over with, they throw another curveball and have She-Hulk visit Kevin Feige in Marvel Studios and basically have her talk about how this whole thing is just manufactured, this finale sucks, but it's like... The writers knew the finale sucked themselves. You're basically joking about what you knew sucked. You knew that your writing was terrible for the entire season, so you play it off as a joke by the end of the season, but to me, that doesn't make your joke better. That doesn't make your writing better neither. It's just... And also the comedy just was not funny. These writers didn't know. These writers came from Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is a very clever show. I don't know how they were not able to make something about a Hulk being in a legal law firm funny. I, I just don't see that. I really wish that they focused more on the legal stuff uh, like a week to week uh, thing where She-Hulk has to represent another superpower being in the MCU every week i think that would have been cool and then we have some fun hijinks along the way it's, this could have been an episodic series the fun lawyer comedy that i thought i was getting myself into turned out to be an unfocused product that didn't make me feel anything and my number nine has got to go to loki this may be an unpopular opinion because it's at the top of everybody's list but to me upon rewatch loki is boring the show worked for me week to week when I first saw it last year, and it also worked for world building, introducing the TVA, and giving more depth to Loki as a character. They really marketed this show as like a crime prison drama where Loki has to like break out of prison or something like that, and I really wish that they really focused more on the prison break aspects, or even just the buddy cop detective story that they were going for in episode 2. I thought that was pretty great, having a multiversal murderer on the loose, and Loki has to solve the mystery, come to find out, it's a variant of him that's doing it, that would have been interesting, but... Most of the show really wasn't about that. Most of the show was about the relationship between Loki and himself. And basically himself with Sylvie, a variant of him that has her own personality. And really, the show wasn't about Loki. And like they said in episode two, 
is really about Sylvie. I loved it when I first watched it, but now I have no reason or urge to revisit it. It hasn't even connected to the rest of the multiversal saga, which it is in when Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out and when season two comes out, of course. But when I watched that show and then the projects following it didn't connect to anything in the multiversal saga, I felt like this has to be a number nine. And number eight for me has got to go to Moon Knight. My friends loved Moon Knight and... Really, I didn't like this show. <laughs> I I wish I, I could have loved that. Honestly, I think I loved it for the first two episodes. Three, it, it was cool. The action was finally picking up. And then four, I really loved episode four. I thought episode four was my favorite episode. And there's when you're watching it, it's really great. Afterwards, you just don't care. So I didn't like the show. Like I said, the first couple of episodes had me hooked, but around this time, I was really feeling the fatigue of the MCU. Around this time is when I had got COVID. It was the end of the year for classes, and also Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness was coming out. It just felt like so much. Maybe it was just me. The mystery of Khonshu and the Moon Knight persona was interesting enough. Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke acting, especially Isaac, was, was incredible. Oscar Isaac, in my opinion, is probably one of the top 10 best actors in the MCU at this point. He plays Steven and Mark so well that you have to give him points for that. And also what makes this interesting is that it's an Indiana Jones style adventure where they're doing archaeology expeditions. They're going through different caves. They're exploring Egyptian tombs. All of it is just fun. It's just a fun Egyptian adventure. But they constantly cut away from the action, which is what I was very excited about because this is a, it just should be like a Marvel Batman or something like that, even though they're totally two different characters. They have similarities, of course. And they just cut away from the action, and when it happens, it sucks. When they finally showed the action in episode three, it sucked. And they cut away from the final fight in the last episode. So you really didn't get to see any moon knight brutality it's different enough when the dramatic emotional moments hit they hit right thanks to oscar isaac's performance but moon knight as a show i was incredibly disappointed which is why i never did a review on it number seven for me is hawkeye at first i didn't like this show i was gonna put this at the bottom of the list again maybe fatigue maybe i felt fatigue up to this point because of the fact that it was another six episode event and Spider-Man No Way Home was coming out. But even then, I watched every episode. I just felt like they had so much story to tell about Clint Barton after Endgame, but couldn't because of that stupid six-episode event thing. And beyond that, though, upon rewatch a couple weeks ago, this is just a harmless, small-scale Christmas story. Obviously, Jeremy Renner is great, but introducing Kate Bishop into the field in a place where she's not really better than Clint, but she also has her own set of skills that she's good at, and she just has just enough charisma from Haley Seinfeld that makes you really enjoy the character. I can't wait to see more of her, frankly. I mean... She could have easily been a character that I didn't like. I loved her by the end of this. Introducing the character of Echo seemed cool for the show uh, because it relates to Clint's past. But because of that six-episode event, they just didn't have enough time to give her storyline a little bit more depth. And I really am not excited for her show that's coming out in the near months. I'm just not excited for it. Honestly, I felt like she was a wasted character. I also wish that this show would have went for a more darker story and thematic story. Just like how Arrow does a little bit from like the first two seasons of Arrow. I really wish they would have went that route because it's a show about Clint's past coming to haunt him. And what he did during those five years of Endgame should not go unnoticed. He murdered a lot of people. I really wish that this wasn't just a scavenger hunt for his suit. And it was really a true, deep exploration of Clint Barton post-Endgame. With him being with his family, knowing what he did during those five years. As fun and enjoyable as it is to see another Archer project like Arrow... I really wish this was more than just Kate Bishop featuring Clint Barton. Number six for me is What If Season 1. This is just like I Am Groot, where it's animation, but still in the MCU. 
for sure, this has been at the top of my most anticipated list for Phase 4. And this series delivered. The 2D slash 3D animation style that makes it look like the comics, but also they look very much like the MCU actors was just a brilliant way to bring this whole thing to life. It, it looks 2D, but at the same time, it's 3D. It just looks great. Like, it looks really good. Not much to say about What If. It's essentially an Elseworlds project utilizing the MCU actors' voices to culminate in an epic multiversal team-up like The Avengers. The novelty of the show, to me, just works. What if Peggy Carter took the Super Soldier Serum? What if T'Challa was abducted instead of Peter Quill? This show took his interesting concept and did exactly what it set out to do. All in all, What If is just a cool thing to exist. Okay, off my top five list for me has got to go to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What was once at the bottom of the list along with Hawkeye is made its way up to top five. Falcon and the Winter Soldier serves as a true follow-up to that one moment in Endgame. And even though we saw it as a triumphant moment, you got to ask the question, how does a black man feel about this? How does Sam feel about taking up that responsibility, being the representation of America? As a black man. And how does Bucky react to his friend being gone or his shield being given to John Walker? All of it is just profound stuff for these characters. Because as a black man myself, you beg the question, right, what would a black Captain America look like in America 2021? In America 2022? In America 2023? How would a black Captain America be perceived? It wouldn't have been perceived that well back then. I don't even think it would be perceived well now. All of it was just so good, giving us some more depth for the Sam character, also introducing his family, and it just the boat, man. The boat plot, I, I really learned to finally understand that boat plot and to finally understand Sam's character arc throughout the entire show. And just the chemistry between him and Bucky was awesome as well. You know, Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie, those two actors, giving them a buddy cop show was the best thing that Marvel could ever do. This is the one series that actually feels like a six hour movie. The action is cinematic, the themes are taken seriously, and all in the right response to the blip and Cap being gone. New characters like Isaiah Bradley and John Walker, both juxtapositions of Steve, but Carly and the Flag Smashers suck. She's a whiny character that I could really see her point for the first couple of episodes until she started blowing up people in buildings, until she started murdering people. Then you kind of lost me. And it also seemed like they were trying to justify her by the end of the show. It just rubbed me the wrong way. Also, the threat of the Flash Smashers weren't big enough for Bucky to act on bringing Zemo into the mix. But after being actionless with WandaVision, it's refreshing to see an action-filled MCU safe bet that returns to the formula while also being something different. Number four for me is Werewolf by Night, a cool addition to the MCU. It can be quite jarring to see something like this. Now, the only reason why this is above Falcon and the Winter Soldier is because Falcon and the Winter Soldier had Carly in the mix. I'm all positive about this because it's an old school black and white monster flick. It's practical, it's corny, and it's gory. And the best part, it doesn't connect in the MCU. Apparently, if it's in black and white, you can do gore, you can spray blood all over the camera, you can cut somebody's ear off and have blood just splatter everywhere. And it was so refreshing to finally see blood. It was so refreshing to see that MCU characters can bleed. Man thing here, I really love him as a character. And also the other, the human characters, they're fine. I mean, nothing really interesting about that. But really, even though it's inside of the MCU, I would greatly appreciate if they could leave this as just a one shot on Disney Plus. I, I really want to see more of these special presentations. Kick it off my top three list for me is Gotta Go to Miss Marvel. A fun series that focuses on family, community, culture, and heart. Iman Vellani is perfect in the role. She's funny, charming, and charismatic. And when the show focuses on how a Muslim community reacts to their own hero, it works as a small scale story. I hated the casting of this show. When I first got word that this woman named Iman Vellani was going to get the role, she got it straight out of her high school. Like the day she graduated high school, she got this role. She has no other acting credits. How? If she can get this role, I can get this role. Like, I'm about to graduate. So it's like, it's, it's strange to me thinking about how far I've come because 
I hated on this show. I hated the trailers. Uh, I just wasn't excited for the show. When I watched that first episode, immediately I tweeted my thoughts on the first episode. And I just found it all fantastic. Miss Marvel was a fantastic show to me. But just like any other show, it suffers from the other plot line. The gen plot sucks, and by the 4th, 5th, and 6th episode, I really felt the fatigue of this show. I mean, I felt like, ugh, oh, this show is so boring now. And the effects of her powers just look terrible. They're, they're bad. Miss Marvel serves as a relatable, creative entry in the MCU that's nothing less than charming. My runner-up at number two for me has got to go to Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special. This and Ms. Marvel was battling between number two. I really debated on putting Ms. Marvel at number two because I just loved the show. It was fantastic. But this has to go at number two for me because it doesn't have the problem of that gen plot. That gen plot was terrible inside of Ms. Marvel. Uh, James Gunn returns to the MCU and crafts a project that's exactly what it is. A Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. It has all of the Christmas themes with that Guardians of the Galaxy and James Gunn twist. We also get more depth on the character of Mantis, somebody that's really been underwritten inside of these movies, and it just makes you love Drax even more. This whole entire special was just a fun project to see. It's a cool thing to see because it is the second Marvel presentation, but this is the first thing that they ever really wanted to do for Disney Plus and I'm so glad that James Gunn came back to write and direct it because I don't even think anybody else could do it as great as James Gunn could. All in all, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special is funny, it's entertaining and heartfelt and when you find out that Mantis and Peter Quill are siblings, it hits hard. When the emotional moments happen, they hit hard. James Gunn does not miss once again. I cannot wait volume three but coming in at my number one has got to go to wandavision the mcu on disney plus has never reached the height of this show's weekly watch for me it was the first time i downloaded twitter so seeing everybody's hype for this show week to week all of it was just incredible the mystery of the hex and how vision is alive was the best part for me but also the show was different i also loved how the mystery unraveled itself by the end and how agatha had a plan to release the scarlet witch but ultimately it was wanda's fault the hex was her fault and coming to realize that is what made the core of the show great the core of the show is wanda's grief and tragedy and how she responds to that hence making the hex they introduce new characters like monica rambeau and i am a big fan of her and just the overall nostalgia beats that this show has with going through the different decades of sitcoms some of these sitcom decades that i grew up with and it just creates such a refreshing take for the mcu all in all wandavision brought something new and interesting to the mcu offering mystery emotion and uniqueness while the middle act was rocky, Phase 4 on Disney Plus began and ended so well with both my number one and my number two WandaVision and the Holiday Special, respectively. This is why WandaVision has to come in at number one. Alright guys, that is it for the ranking. Please know that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion. And you're free to comment down below your ranking of all 11 MCU TV shows ranked from the worst to the best just like me. Or you could just do your favorite. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter. That's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also that Marvel playlist. That link is in the description always. And with that being said, guys, please don't forget to come back later for more MCU rankings and reviews. Merry Christmas to all. Happy holidays. And with that being said, I will see you all next time. Peace.